Hi, my name is George Carlson. I'm with the Maker Barn, which is a maker space just near the Woodlands, Texas. And uh, I'd like to show you a project we've been working on. This is a maker space access control system. It's a system that's designed to, to allow access to potentially dangerous equipment to only those people who are authorized to use it. Right now, there is no card in the system, and the machine cannot be, cannot be run. If I put my card in there, I get a solid green light, and I can use the equipment. And uh, if I take this card, this particular card is not authorized on this machine. I'll get a red light here. And uh, the red line indicates the machine cannot be used, and of course it can't. But uh, anyway, it's an interesting piece of equipment. I'd like to show you a few more details here in just a minute. Make Barn Max system is an easy system to install. There's only three major components in the whole system. First one being the Wi Fi router. This Wi Fi router is a type you can buy at any computer store. Uh, some Wi Fi routers you can get with a USB on the back, which is good because then you can use it to power up the server. The server is a, a Raspberry Pi Model 2. We like it. It's uh, small, it's inexpensive, and it's very reliable. Third part, of course, is the Max are the Max units themselves. Uh, these uh, you can have up to 128 or 128 stations, and they're each individually addressable. What's not shown on here is a computer, tablet. Uh, anything running in a normal browser can be used to control and uh, monitor the system. Here are the components that make up the Mac system. Here we have a, a router, a Wi-Fi router, and a simple thing you can buy at uh, any computer store. Now this particular router is nice. It has a USB on the back which allows me to power up the Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi is a server and uh, it, it uh, the Max units here communicate to the server through Wi-Fi and a, a browser can communicate to the server again through Wi-Fi. I'm just using my, my phone as a uh, uh, as, as a browser and it's looking at the uh, the log so if I put device in the log I think you'll see uh, the log update and then changes and of course this could be a t you know we'd prefer to use a tablet or something with a larger screen but uh, we can we can store a lot of data we can we can store uh, the, the you know who's using ma machines when they're using the machines how long they're using the machines uh, who, uh, who and when changes are made to the system. All these things are logged. We'll cover about that in the software a little bit later. But you can see it's a very simple system. Uh, only requires one router, one server, and up to 128 max units, and really as many uh, devices as you want to, to, uh, to observe the data and control the system. Right, I'd like to show you some more details and features of the Maker Barn uh, Max unit here. This uh, has, it has a uh, acrylic cover, and then behind the cover is the uh, the main uh, part of it. Here it is actually machined from Corian, which is a very strong uh, and chemical resistant material. The badge slides in like this. It's held in place by gravity. If you uh, bring some dirt or Chips in, they'll fall out through the bottom. There's a slot cut all the way through. And uh, if you get some dirt in the corners, just blast out a little bit of air. On the back side, you see a, a gasket. Now, this unit isn't waterproof, but it certainly is uh, splash proof. It's uh, dust proof and uh, chip proof. So, whatever surface you mount it on is not going to be uh, compromising the equipment or, uh, or itself if you, if you get a little water or oil on it. Good way of mounting this thing is uh, is this neem enclosure. This is a non-metallic uh, single gang enclosure. These are available at uh, home centers, uh, hardware stores, electrical supply, that sort of thing. They're inexpensive, and uh, they seal real well. The gasket. There's uh, there's four places for screws. It'll screw down nice and tight. You can have a good, well-sealed system. It's uh, very rugged. Another another way of doing this is to surface mount it. This device right here is mounted 
again, on the front of an electrical enclosure, but it could be mounted on the front of your equipment. And uh, it requires a rectangular cutout and four screw locations, and uh, you're all set. It's, uh, it's a good, easy, rugged uh, way of mounting it. Let's talk a little bit about the electrical side of this, electronics. This is our circuit board. Uh, this uh, has a, a particle photon processor on it, very powerful little processor. The processor has Wi-Fi built on it, and you can see there's a small Wi-Fi antenna right here. This is the internal antenna, and then we can also, if we place this jumper on here, we can use an external antenna. External antenna proves your range a little bit, and uh, perhaps reliability. Now these jumpers right here, they set up the station ID number. Now each machine has a particular station ID number and when we talk about the, the, the software interface later on we can we'll talk about this, the uh, machine ID numbers but this is where you tell the unit what his ID number is and these jumpers uh, they're labeled 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64 so you just place a jumper wherever you need that number that'll add up to the desired number that you want. For instance uh, if you want a number 23 you'd put a jumper at 16, 4, two and one. That adds up to 23. It's that simple. You don't need to be a computer whiz to figure that out. Um, <clears throat> there, on the electrical side, um, there's we have a relay right here. And the relay uh, actuates whenever a card is uh, is uh, detected that it uh, that's in its system. Now the relay is rated at uh, 10 amps at 240 volts. So There's plenty of drive. The relay is available output are available here that this the wiper and a normally open and normally closed are all available on this connector and these can be used to, to directly drive a, a control loop in your machine or uh, or a contactor or whatever there's quite a bit of power here now if you need a <clears throat> to drive a solid state relay then you can use this relay in conjunction with the five volts and ground available here to provide the bias for the relay or, if you would like, you can remove this relay. There are some uh, lines that are silk screen on the board, and you put jumpers in those locations. And then you can use these connectors here to directly drive the, the uh, solid state relay, which is kind of a nice thing to do. Now, the power input, <clears throat> this thing is a low, very low power. It's uh, in idle mode, it only draws about 600 milliwatts. And when it's actuated, it only draws just a hair over a watt, so it's very low power. This is where the power is brought in, and this connector right here. And it can be 8 to 24 volts, either AC or DC, doesn't matter. And when you hook up DC source, it doesn't matter where you connect it. You can't hook it up in reverse. There's a little uh, bridge rectifier here, that um, so, so polarity doesn't mean anything here. So. Now, uh, a good uh, AC source, uh, well, DC source, you could use a... DC that's somewhere in your equipment, or you can uh, you can use a, uh, a wall wart, something like that. Or um, if you want to, uh, AC power sources, a small transformer, such as this Triad transformer. This is a Triad F216X. It uh, outputs 12 volts AC, and it, uh, it works quite well. Another way of doing it is just using a simple bell transformer. Bell transformers are available at hardware stores or home centers, that place, sort of place. You can even get bell transformers with 240 volt input. So uh, it'll be uh, good if you have 240 volt equipment. But anyway, that's, uh, that's pretty much it for the electrical side. And uh, <clears throat> this is very easy to install and very reliable. This miter saw is a good example of how the MAC system could be used with a corded tool such as this miter saw. Uh, we have a, a box here and inside this gray box is a solid state relay and a, and a, a duplex outlet. The, uh, the miter saw is plugged into the outlet and also a vacuum cleaner as well. And uh, they can't be unplugged because the cover is on, on the box. And uh, the, the vacuum cleaner is nice. We have an automatic vacuuming system for the miter saw. So what, what happens when I plug my badge in, it will uh, activate the vacuum cleaner and enable the saw to run.
pull out the badge and the vacuum cleaner shuts down and I can go work on uh, other projects.